So it's going to be an interesting day today. I'm just out and about on the station. We've just had a heap of rain out of nowhere through the middle. As you can see, I've just come through here. Um, I've just passed a bunch of our boundary creeks and they're all down. So it's going to be a big, big day. I'm going to have to go get some rolls of barbed wire and fix these creeks. So I've just come through this water here that I just showed you. And uh, we're going to go check a few bores. Um, most should be okay because we've just had a mob of rain. So the, it's good. We've got surface water laying around everywhere. So the cattle will be out and about walking around, chewing on grass and uh, drinking out of this surface water. But like I said, I've got some pretty major creeks that have flowed. So we've got the fences that cross the creeks, floodgates, whatever you want to call them. They've all been washed away. So I'm going to go have to get, go and get some rolls of barbed wire, some pickets, and uh, try and fix these creeks. It's a fair bit to do, so no time to waste. Check this out up ahead. Very, very good to see. Now look, sometimes when it's like this, um, it, you really got to pick your battles because sometimes you might not need to drive the roads when they're like this. However, there is bores way out west that may not have got any of this rain. It might be dry as there, so we do need to check those watering points. So this creek ran a fair amount by the looks of it, bank to bank. So pretty much I'm going to have to replace wires from, there's a picket just there, all the way across to that strainer post. Absolutely obliterated this little fence that runs through here, it's gone. I've gone and picked up some pickets. Got a bunch of wire and a roll of barb so we can run some new wires across here. I don't know how much of this I'm going to film. It's kind of hard when you do stuff like this. I'm funny, I'm kind of having a bit of a debate with myself. I wasn't even going to get the camera out to say this stuff because I just can't be effed to be honest. I just need to get this job done. And it's hot, usual story. And there's just other stuff that needs to be done instead of swinging off cameras all the time and trying to put the drone in the air. I almost just can't be bothered, so I don't know how much of this I'm going to film. And really, I just need to sort of get the job done, so yeah, I don't know, we'll see. A lot of people wear gloves when mucking around with barbed wire, I don't. My old man never has. Just, I always reckon gloves get in the way. They just get caught up on the barbs. And uh, you just end up getting bloody frustrated with them. So, yeah, usually don't worry about it. cut yourself occasionally but normally not too bad and it's funny once you start when you first start now so I'm just thinking back to when I was a kid doing this stuff I used to always hate fencing I don't love it now it's not the finest job but I used to hate it wasn't that good at it and when you're not used to doing it you always cut yourself but once you get used to it you it's kind of just second nature and you get it done so what we're going to do now is put a bar through the roller barb and then I'm just going to walk this out all the way across to the other side of the creek. I hope the wind noise isn't too bad. It's pretty windy. I think it's going to be pretty bad. I'm just on my phone and I've got no special mic to 
get rid of the filter the wind noise out. So uh, is what it is, I suppose. Somehow I've got to get up this bloody hill. Nah, it's easy. She'll be right. Probably doesn't look like much on on telly, <laughs> but it's pretty steep. At least this isn't a full roll of barb. About half full, I think. If it was full, I wouldn't be holding it out like this. That's for sure. So that was the top wire I just ran and I've joined it up there. The, uh, the middle and bottom wire I've cut just here. So I'm going to join the next two wires just here. I'll probably cut them away from this picket. It's bent over. I tried to straighten it, but it's jammed in there. I actually have straightened it before by driving my car in here, hooking a drag chain up to it and reversing back a bit. But I could definitely get in, in, in here now. These creeks get really soft in the wet and um, there's no way I'm risking driving in here and then getting bogged and turning a mission into a head F-U-C-K. So I'm not going to worry about it. So we'll hook this one up here while we've got the roller barb this end. Hook it up, run back the other way, hook up the last wire that side and then walk it back this way. So I've got these wires way up in the air, but what I'll do is you'll see I'll wrap some wrap some wire around them to pull them down and tie them to this picket that's in the uh, in the sand here. Pull it down like this. Still got a bunch of pickets to hit in. So that's tied down there like that. You know, do the lowest point first. She's up there. This is, this is the bottom wire obviously first. Tie her down, she goes all the way up to the end there. Obviously, some pickets need to be hit in up here, but if we tie this down first, all three wires, to the lowest point in the creek, then we could work our way along. Pull this second wire down next, and then I can uh, wrap the wire around it and pull it down. Pull it down to where it needs to sit. I bug it up and uh, this middle wire is a bit too tight and I think the top one is going to be as well. So I can't pull it down manually far enough. So I've just a bit of a trick here, chucked on the uh, wire strainers to help me pull it down a bit more. Hopefully we can get a bit more out of it. Yeah, when I ran the wires out before, I uh, probably should have let them hang a bit looser. I think I'm gonna have dramas with this top one as well. I'm trying to pull it all the way down here. Hopefully when we go to put in pickets and whatever up here, we don't have dramas. I think we'll be okay. Just pull this down with these strainers. Should be all right, I reckon. One more maybe. All right, now I can wrap this around. Just being careful, I'm trying not to put my head over this wire or anything. It's under a lot of strain and if it let go, it'd seriously mess you up. Alrighty, so we've got this little cutting edge off a grader or dozer blade, whatever it is. Oh, fair bit of weight in it. This will hang underneath the fence in this bit of the gap here on the edge of the creek and just weigh them wires down a bit.
hook some plain, plain wire up and hang it there. Rightio. She's not perfect and it's not finished, but look, there is a fence where there wasn't now. So that is good. Um, like I said, I've still got a um, head e uh, east now and fix another creek. Once I get that done, head back west which is this way to uh, start an engine so we have water tonight. So better get to it because not, not that much sun left. What a beautiful evening. Well, we got some of those creeks fixed that you saw. So just gonna head back, uh, head back out west now and get an engine started at a bore, make sure the cattle have water tonight. G'day folks, so we're in the shed. I'm actually making a, as you would have seen in the video, I was running out the barbed wire with a little pole like this. With the barbed wire, um, this goes through the middle of the wire and you would have seen me walking it backwards. That's silly, it's not the way to do it. There's easier ways, it's just what I had on hand that day, so I did it that way. So I'm actually gonna make up a spinner. So the wire will sit over this and then I can grab the end of the wire with some pliers and then run the wire out. Or if it's a big long run, you can attach the end of the wire to the strainer post and then just drive forward and it'll unwind. The little machine I'm using, SIG Weld, Handy Weld 130, just with uh, gasless wire. It's a good little machine. It'll do up to six mil. Um, you can select your plate thickness here from one mil up to three. Otherwise, you've got manual settings, which is what we want because we're welding five mil. So, wire feed speed, amps right here, 6.4 is what we want. And about that. Beautiful. like so beauty make the job a lot easier so we've had a bit more rain the last couple of days gotta get in and uh, fix a couple of more of these creeks there's a heap to do it's gonna take a little while so uh, try and get a couple more done today we're back at another creek um, this one's pretty wide so basically from that picket there is just a tangled mess of <laughs> barbed wire and uh, all the way across there so I don't know maybe 75 meters or something so I've got a couple of rolls of wire and we will use this thingy I made up to run the wire out rightio so we're back on the job this is the little uh, amazing piece of engineering I came up with in the shed, you might remember. Um, after weeks of, you know, blueprints, CAD drawings, engineering, tech tech drawings, all that sort of stuff, this is what I came up with. Now look, uh, so, as you'll recall early in the app and I spoke about it, I, had, I was walking backwards with the barb in the creek that's just over here, it's just what I had on hand on the day. But normally you would use something like this, maybe on the back of a ute. So as you'll see, it's a pretty heavy base and uh, I'm able to just sit this on the ground. That's the idea of it. Grab onto the end of the wire with some pliers and just walk backwards. Now if it's a, I think in the last step or the step before, I can't remember, I uh, showed you guys the old fencing rig. Well, it's got four of these welded to the back. So when you're actually doing kilometers of fencing, like putting new fencing in, you can run out a bunch of barb and you just have these on the back and drive the car forward. Hook the wires up to the strainer post and just drive. But for, you know, small fixes like this, like creek crossings and whatever, this is a good way to do it. Rightio, so I've ran uh, two wires, the top and the middle. Obviously you work from the top first and then work your way down. So we'll run out the third and final wire and I'll show you. Shows how that looks pretty much. 
it's only early in the day and we got bloody lots of cloud moving in so just makes it so much nice a bit of a cool breeze it's not too bad but it's half muggy and high temp so when the when the sun's out and the clouds aren't there it's just stinking hot We've run out the bottom wire up to that end, hooked it all up, and there's the thingy. Here's the end of the wire, so that's perfect. That's where we need to hook it up to. So bottom wire. So that was that was good right to the end of the roll. So we'll hook that up now. So stick this down here somewhere. Pull it tight. The wire sits in the clamp. And we'll grab these. And uh, stick these back here somewhere, clear way back, because uh, there's a you know a decent amount of wire to strain up, so we need a fair bit of movement that way. As we work this lever, this will creep along this chain towards that way, pulling the wires tight together. So. Yeah, give ourselves a bit of room there. Hopefully you can see what's going on here. I don't know what's happening with the camera. And we just want to stick this barb in that clamp. And then we can work this forward. I'll just check the camera and make sure it's on the money. We just work this Of course it's going to get stuck on it friggin stick down the end there now That would probably just about do it now I can join the two wires together so if we look back this way top wire obviously middle and the bottom we just strained up so if you look all the way back down there there's a picket just here I've got the top wire sitting up there and the middle one tied on just to get them out the road and they're sitting pretty happy so I don't know if you can see that's the whole stretch of the creek see how the wires drooped a bit so like you don't want to pull it really, really tight. So what we need to do, I'll show you, is but, and there's the bottom wire hanging. So it doesn't need to be really, really tight because we're going to go back down there. I've got some pickets hit into the ground on an angle. So what we'll do is we'll tie each run of barbed wire down to those pickets and that'll pull it down because obviously the creek's lower. So we need to pull all the wires down, but it will also pull the wires tight, is the plan. Chop that about there, we can feed this through here. So there's a few different ways to join wire and obviously you know it's probably easier if you have the join here so instead of making that loop over this clamp if that loop was here and this loop was here and you join them in the middle but there's a few different ways to join wire so you see how that was i should have showed you a bit better but that was um this was hooked on right this was hooked on and all I had to do was, that was hooked on like that. 
All I had to do was take that off and go one movement and we're off. If you, if you take that off and there's still too much tension to take this off, so then you have to go, you have to go another one back and then take it off. It means that the wire has slipped and it's probably going to be too loose. Sometimes it happens and it's fine. That should be good. We'll go back down this other end and see what's going on. Right, so here's the bottom wire. What we'll do is, it's going to be jammed on a stick, eh? Look at that. God damn it. Look at this. I'm trying to pick this up and work with it. Friggin' hell. Anyway, yeah, this is ass up. Why do I do this? Tell you what, folks, some days, eh, I just don't know why I'm even bothering with this stuff. Seriously. So here's the bottom wire. Oh, and that just snapped. One of them days, eh? So. On these pickets anyway, um, top wire, top hole, go four holes down for the second, seven holes down for the third. Depends if you're running three barb or four barb or whatever. So, uh, my friggin' camera overheated so I couldn't show you any of that stuff, but anyway, um, so much all done down that way. Just got to hook up this bar to these wires and that will pull all of this down a bit. And uh, so obviously that's the main creek crossing. I've pulled all the wires down there. I will show you the finished product. But when the river, when the creek runs full, it does run this channel as well. So as you can probably see these, you know, there's a bit of high land just here where that picket is. And then there's high land, high ground here where this picket is. It's a bit low here. So if we hang this bar off these wires, it just pulls it down a little bit and uh, yeah, make sure the cattle can't get through. So this little thing worked really well. Happy with it. Fence is up. Goodly. So uh, as you can see, there's the pipeline running from a bore way that way and it pumps water to this bore. The creek when it ran, the debris, logs and stuff have sort of washed the pipeline down. So I'm going to have to untangle it up there, but also here. As you can see, it's all tangled up with this wire and stuff and a bunch of logs all over it. So I'm going to try and pull some of this away with the motor car and uh, just free this pipe up. Make sure it's not all tight, you know, it's all tight in there and make sure there's no kinks in it or anything. Right, yeah, try and pull some of this stuff away. Keep an eye on it for me, eh? Sing out if anything goes wrong. What's going on here? Don't want to ruin that pipe, you know? Definitely going, but pretty heavy, all that stuff. So that log was sort of dragging all of it out. Um, but we managed to get it free, so I'll try and pull some more of this big stuff out. Oh, buggered. Rightio, so we got the pipe. Um, it was laying hard up against that tree under all that crap, and it was a bit kinked. So it's out of there now. Um, it was kinked up there too in that heap so still a mess here but it's out and we're good so that's enough we got other stuff to do we'll come back and deal with this later another day uh i got this stuff here thorst it's like hydration stuff full of um you know electrolytes and whatever it's pretty good i did a bit of research on it and i've been using it and it's like I've just been sweating it out for the last forever and uh you know you just keep drinking water and it's not always just doesn't do the job you just get you end up just with a gut full of water but you lose all your electrolytes and salts and stuff 
So, yeah, mix a couple of these up and they bloody, I really like them, eh? They quench your thirst and seem to be a good thing anyway. Going on, mate. You all right? You having a sleep, or what are you doing? You don't look too good. There's always something going down, eh? Oh, what's going on with your knee? Oh, man, can you get up or what? Can you get up? I oh, better try and sort this out, folks. So, um, couldn't get that bull up. Big fella didn't want a bar of it. Very heavy, obviously, and like he's trying, but he's also exhausted. So, I could have probably tried with the motor car, but I'm just going to leave him. It's heading into night time and just let him rest, you know, and try and get up himself. It's a big mob of fluid built up on his knee. Don't really know what's going on there on his joint. Um, I'll have a chat with the old man and see what he reckons and go from there but for tonight we'll just leave him rest I reckon well uh, anyway I suppose I may as well cut it there cheers guys I'll uh, leave you to it take it easy